Hello again, welcome. Thank you for clicking through to this video where I explain why it's vital that fuel has to be atomized and emulsified before it can be burnt in the internal combustion engine. So basically, the job of the carburetor, I shall show the working of the carburetor, how it atomizes the fuel, and then I shall show the internal combustion engine inside the engine where that fuel that's been made by the carburetor is combusted, and if there's any deviance from that, why it's a detriment. And this is how these systems work, to the best of my knowledge and beliefs, of working on these to particular type of engines over the years. And uh, please do check out my other videos, which explain carburetor workings in more detail. In this one, I'm only going to explain the main role of atomization and combustion. So there are other videos I've got out there that explain the workings of the carburetor in much more detail. Let's get started. So in order to explain how the fuel is atomized so it can be combusted, I'll have to explain how the fuel is drawn out of the jets because it comes hand in hand with each other. And as we can see now then, air comes into the carburetor there because of the lowering of the piston on the induction strokes. And this air of course would have come through the air filter so it would be filtered air. So it enters the induction area of the carburetor and you can see it comes through and it passes the venturi here. And in this video, I will go through basically how a venturi works and how it's vital in creating a combustible form of fuel. But in any case, the air continues to come down the induction tube and then head off towards the engine. Now the piston travelling downwards on the induction stroke is drawing in all of that air through the induction tube and causing a large amount of vacuum down here inside the tube. And because the piston wants to draw in more air than it can get because we've got the choke butterflies closed, what it actually starts to do is it draws down on the jets. So it starts to draw out on the jets. All that vacuum has felt right down the jets, right to where the fuel is. For example, if we just take a look here at the four stroke, we can see that that vacuum, which I've indicated now is purple arrows, is actually drawing up that fuel from the bottom there of the carburetor's float chamber. And as it draws it up, it draws it out into the induction tube. And as it continues to be pulled out of the main jet there, it gets caught in the air that's flowing past, and then it heads in towards the engine. But the magic of all of this, if you like, is the fact that the air hits this fuel so hard and breaks it down to small particles. And I'll explain that in more detail in a moment. But if we take a look at the two stroke over here, we can see that as with the four stroke, we've got a vacuum building up inside the inlet tube here and it's drawing out there on the jets. And the fuel up here in the metering reservoir here is the store that is drawn upon by the jets. And it's made available up here by two means. The first one is the fuel pump diaphragm here, pumps it up that way via this fuel line and then it enters the metering area there and fills all of this area ready to be available for the jets. And so as that vacuum pulls out on the jets there, it draws out that fuel again just like the two stroke and then it gets caught in the air and then heads off into the engine. And the important thing again to remember here is that that air that comes through the induction tube there comes through at such a high velocity that it hits that fuel again so hard that it breaks it down into smaller particles, exactly the same as the four stroke. So I'll explain now why this fuel needs to be broken down into smaller particles and mixed with air and exactly how the carburetor can do that because at the moment I've only explained about the vacuum pulling out the fuel and the fuel being mixed with air and taken into the engine. So let's take a closer look of how this happens. And in order to do that, I'm going to zoom in a little closer here of the actual induction tube on the four stroke. But what I'm about to show you is principally the same for both carburettors. OK, so there we go. We've got the close up there. And let's imagine now that we're just starting the engine. So the pistons are lowering on the induction stroke, so we're just pulling in some air now. And so, as this air passes the top of the jet there and creates a vacuum inside the induction tube there, it draws out that fuel. But the fuel doesn't come out as liquid like this. It doesn't actually come into the induction tube this way. And it's a very good thing indeed that it doesn't, because if it did, in this liquid form, it would go into the engine and it wouldn't actually combust inside the engine, so the engine wouldn't actually run. And as I've mentioned, what the carburetor has to do 
is break down this liquid into small particles where the air can mix with it and emulsify it and I'll show you how it does that. But in a nutshell it does this using high velocity air. Now of course the air naturally coming into the induction tube is at a high velocity but it needs to be upregulated there in order to draw out that fuel and emulsify it. And importantly if we notice the air here we can see it's starting to cluster more densely there. And that's because it's coming up against the resistance here, a smaller gap here caused by the Venturi. Because we've got a smaller gap, we've got that air building up there and most of it can't get through this gap quick enough and so it starts to slow down there. But the piston wants to keep drawing that through all of that air and because there isn't enough of a gap there for that free movement of air to enter through the carburetor, a huge vacuum builds up on this side of the resistance here and of course because there's a huge vacuum here what air does actually come through that resistance there in the Venturi is moving at an incredibly high velocity and so at the moment we've got two main things going on here as I've said we've got this high velocity air traveling past the top of the jet and we've also got that high amount of vacuum there which will pull fuel out of the jet and so I'll just backtrack slightly, there we go. What actually happens now then, as that air rushes past the top of the jet and the vacuum pulls the fuel out of the jet, what's actually happening is that that air starts to hit this fuel as soon as it starts to appear out of the top of the jet. So as soon as it does that, it starts to break that fuel down into smaller particles, which is what we call atomizing. So it's atomized the fuel at this point. And remember, it's all thanks to that high velocity air created by the Venturi, which hits that fuel so hard to allow this to occur. And so that's how the fuel is atomized. It's atomized because it's broken down into smaller particles. And it's also emulsified now. Because it's mixed with the air, you can see there, the air's managed to get around all those particles. It's now emulsified the fuel. And now, thanks to the workings of the carburetor, the fuel is now in a state where it can be combusted by the engine. And I'll just explain in basic terms how and why this fuel is important it's in this state when it gets into the engine itself. So to do that, I'll just bring up a picture of a basic engine. There we go. Before I go on, just to clarify, this is the top of the piston here and that moves up and down. This here is the sides of the barrel, of course, and we can see the fins there that keep the barrel cool because I've just identified it as a single cylinder air-cooled engine. And we've got the spark plug there. And of course, here we've got the area here where the piston travels up and down in the cylinder. There wouldn't actually be this much of a gap. It's only an illustration here I've made. And so let's now imagine that we're going to try and get this engine running. If we look at the fuel there, if it came into the engine, like this in liquid form it would just lie on top of the piston this way so let's imagine it's came into this engine now and it's just lying there in liquid form and so above it there would be the air because these two components haven't been mixed so we've got the air above there and we've got the liquid form of the petrol line beneath it now I've illustrated the air as existing in dots like this when in reality it would be more like this because air of course is everywhere it doesn't exist in dots so if we imagine now they're the two components we've got inside the cylinder and the piston is rising. So it's going to try and combust when it gets to the top. And it reaches the top and the spark plug fires to try and combust that fuel. Now when I say the spark plug fires, the electrical signal to the spark plug to fire occurs. But at this stage, if the spark plug does fire at all, then it's not going to be able to set fire to that fuel. Because that fuel is in liquid form, it actually drenches the spark plug. And as I've said, if the spark plug fires at all, then it'll be a very weak spark and none of that heat will be able to travel round the fuel in order for it to combust because it's in liquid form. And so let's now start again with the scenario that the fuel was emulsified and atomized. So what we've got now is the fuel in there that's mixed with the air. You could see there that it's in tiny particles and the air is mixed all around it. So we've got air all around 
in between all of these particles keeping them apart and now when the piston rises and gets to the compression point and the spark plug fires something different occurs of course what we can do now is see that when the spark plug fires that heat can travel right round and get to each particle a lot better because there's space between them and so now the fire continues to spread and get to all those little particles as the piston lowers which is what happens with a four stroke petrol engine it actually continues the combustion process as the pistons lowering which of course is unlike a diesel engine which combusts at the top of the stroke and so as the piston lowers that combustion we can see there we've got areas there where there's exhaust fumes that have already experienced combustion and there are some areas that are still combusting this is as the pistons lowering and so eventually then by the time the pistons got to the lowermost point all there is here in the cylinder is exhaust fumes waiting for the piston to come back up and push them out and start the process again I just wanted to go through this part with the combustion and the engine though to give you a more holistic view of why we need to atomize this fuel okay so I hope that pretty much explains things and I want to thank you again for watching this video and if there anybody else you know of that might benefit from this content please do share and like and if you haven't already subscribed please do so thank you for watching